Okay, so the recording has started and we can get into today's class. Uh, and it was uh, Kiran's birthday on Saturday, no, Kiran? <laughs> yes, ma'am, yes. Okay, how was it? How was the day? Ma'am, at first everyone is forgot. I I a little upset then later. Oh, is it? Oh, you are so sorry. Even my grandmother forgot. <laughs> oh, Okay, okay. Then uh, later on in evening and after in evening and night, I I I too much blessed and all everyone. Even I did not expect like a from you all, ma'am. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. On the cruise, nice. mm -hmm. but my one, it it was nice. I blessed. Yeah. Oh, okay, you. okay, that's great, Kiran. Wonderful. Yeah, and uh, belated wishes. What they wishes to you once again? And pray that uh, God will continue to lead you into greater things in this new year yes. of your life. Yeah, sure. So let's uh, pray together. I uh, would like to request someone to pray. And uh, also, uh, please do pray for Kiran uh, as you do the opening prayer. Anyone? Okay, how about Thomas? Thomas, are you comfortable? Okay, I'll pray. Yeah, sure. Please, thanks. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We praise mm -hmm. you for this wonderful day, Lord, the day beginning. Father, we thank you. We praise you, Father. It's good to hear your word, Lord. As we sit and study your word and scriptures, Father, let the scriptures will come to real to us, Father. I speak the spontaneous revelation as I am speaking, Father. Let me receive the spontaneous revelation, Father. We thank you. We praise you. Help us to understand. Let the spirit of wisdom rest upon each and every one of us. Daddy. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Thomas and uh, Kiran. Uh, we bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, we'll uh, continue with uh, our uh, class for today. We are going through the book of John and we'll see what insights we can gain from it. Uh, we took quite a bit of time in John chapter 1 because there were so many um, insights about the Godhead and especially about Jesus for us to learn and understand. So it took some time, uh, but as we progress, hopefully we will be faster because we also need to uh, complete our portions in time uh, so uh, mostly i will just touch upon uh, the incidents and the truth that those incidents bring out so we can apply it okay in our own lives uh, and as in when you have any questions or uh, you, know, you want to add to what i am sharing you just feel free you know, don't even wait you can always just Post, a, uh, post it on the chat or unmute yourself and talk. Okay, So yes, great. It's wonderful. I mean, the book of John is one of those early books you know, that uh, all of us uh, read or we are instructed to read when we accept Christ. And um, uh, because it's simple and at the same time, it introduces God so clearly to us. Uh, it forms a nice foundation on which we can build all the other things that we learn from God's word. So in the last class, we had started John chapter 2. And in John chapter 2, we saw that Jesus manifest his glory. How did he manifest his glory? He performed a miracle in the wedding of Cana. So some insights that we learned from there are the fact that, you know, uh, God was concerned about the needs of people what people were going through in their everyday situation. We also saw how God's power uh, met the needs of the people. And it was also not really the time uh, when probably Jesus was supposed to start doing uh, his mighty works, but he still responds to the request of Mary. He still responds to the need that he sees around him. Uh, and he you know, basically responds to faith. So that shows us when we carry faith, that it was not really God's timing in, in a sense, because Jesus says like, hey, my time has not yet come. Why are you telling me all these things about not having wine in the wedding? Um, so it kind of shows us that 
he had planned to start releasing his power sometime later but faith right faith causes god to move okay so faith is very important very very important and that is something we see in what happened and also as you look at the incident um, he instructs people to fill those water pots with uh, uh, water you see god wanted the people to take some steps now uh, in our lives uh, in some situations we want god to move on our behalf and we are waiting on him and we say god you do it you do it you do it right but god could give us some instructions and he may want us to move along uh, the lines of the instruction so we have to be careful about stepping into that and doing what he's telling us to do thankfully the servants over here they filled the water pots with water and uh, also one more thing which uh, uh, jesus told them is he said in verse 8 he said draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast again an act of faith now what if the water had not turned into wine so whoever the servant was they had faith in jesus okay uh, otherwise what what were the options the servant would have wanted to take little bit taste it and check ha huh, has it become wine if it has become wine i will give it to the master but uh, the servant exercised faith and said okay god like you are telling me to do this i trust that you have turned water into wine isn't it so amazing amazing that uh, uh, the servant took it and he actually gave it to the master now also we might because we don't have too much of text explaining this uh, some people might say that you know maybe the servant was uh, ignorant completely ignorant to what happened to the uh, water and he just followed instructions also but yeah uh, now if the servant was aware then obviously it's faith on the part of the servant to take a step and you see this everywhere jesus does this everywhere right he tells uh, the people okay now now you you uh, take up your bed and walk you know, do this do that so an act of faith and as we step into the act of faith the healing comes the miracle happens the breakthrough comes so taking steps of faith is also something we learn from this passage and you know we learn that god is a god of um restoration okay uh, and god is a god of miracles because why i uh, shared in the last class that it takes several years to mature and the best wine is aged okay uh, and uh, everyone knows this but god miraculously turned the situation around he water is another um element uh, or, or uh, what do you call that uh, another compound okay i forgot in chemistry <laughs> sorry about that but uh, it's another like it has different components to it and then wine has different components to it so that's why we call it a miracle how can water become wine in a few moments only god can do it it's a miracle he released a miracle and he is a god of restoration because the people the the couple and the master of the feast they were in a difficult time if uh wine was not served to the guests they would have gotten a bad name but you know praise god that their challenging situation their circumstance their shame you could say right because people will talk about it and they'll say oh that wedding they never gave us good wine it was all over the guests would have spoken ill of the hosts but god restored god covered their shame you no know, god really uh, expressed his care towards those who were in need at that time so we understand the nature of god we understand who he is and how he comes through for people uh, he restores the uh, he restores right people's lives and another 
thing that we understand about you know god's miracles and god's restorative work is that it's not second best because when you read the la, uh, the um, uh, ending verse verse 10 you notice that the guests are saying that everyone serves good wine in the beginning and they give out the bad wine towards the end but they praise the hosts and say you have kept the good wine until now so the miracle the work of god the supernatural work of god how how is it in comparison to the natural it is better okay people are praising and saying how is it possible till the end you have good wine so that is the work of god in our lives that is the miracle of god you know how in uh, god's restoration we always read the latter shall be greater than the former the glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former temple so when god does a work of restoration in our lives we can be confident that he is going to do something better he is going to do something greater he is going to do something wonderful so we learn all these things about god and we learn all these things about the work of god okay through the miracle in cana so here uh uh you know jesus it says manifested his glory and you know we talked about that the glory uh, of god the glory of uh, the son of god how did it get manifested it got manifested through a miracle so today when miracles happen we say right that we want to see the glory of god we want to see the manifestation of god's glory so do miracles manifest the glory of god yes so should we pray for miracles to happen yes okay so uh, jesus manifested his glory through the it says signs it signs and uh, miracles supernatural works that he did and what else happened when the miracle took place we see that the disciples believed in him so here is the thing that when the supernatural is demonstrated the genuine supernatural which glorifies god one is that you know god's glory is manifested second is it brings faith so people put their faith in god much more so we must pray and ask god for you know more of the manifestation of god's glory for more of signs wonders miracles healings deliverances it's a good thing and it causes the faith of people to rise because we understand what god can do okay what this world cannot do but what god can do we can see that okay then uh he went from there after this miracle and he continues on his uh, work and continues on with his life so the next incident we read is uh, at passover now passover is again one of the festival of the jews when um, several jews from around jerusalem would also come to jerusalem so you know they would come to the temple for worship they would come to the temple for celebration similar to pentecost so you had people coming in for the passover also so it's a busy time it's a it's a, a crowded time in jerusalem so jesus also goes <coughs> uh because what does it say about jesus when he goes to jerusalem he is the son of god and um, uh, we might think that he would not uphold the law but in his lifetime you see him uh, keeping you know all those those uh, customs of worship because he wanted to honor god and he wanted to worship god so he went up to jerusalem uh, and when he went to the temple uh, something was going on there which he did not like what is that i told you it's a busy time it's crowded so people had come in and along with them visiting the temple they were also engaging in business you know giving taking buying things uh, oxen sheep doves now it could have been for for reasons of worship it could have been for reasons of business right uh, and also money changers money changers why because people have come from other places so they might have wanted to uh, uh, you know get the currency of jerusalem 
so all this is going on but jesus noticed that it was irreverent or it was dishonoring god uh, and and not uh, suitable for worship so what what happened to jesus he got very angry okay now uh, the anger of jesus you know you notice it in a few places when he um, rebukes uh, uh, the religious people the religious mindset you brood of vipers you whitewashed uh, tombs you no know, comments like that he uh, does use right to to uh, in uh, let the people know that their hearts are not right with god and even in this situation you find jesus getting really angry because god's house is being dishonored so what was the reaction to the business that is going on in in the temple it says he made a whip of cords so you know made a whip of cords um, it is said that you know you have to braid it to make a whip okay so and it takes time so was jesus uh, did jesus lose his temper like he couldn't control his anger was that the uh, condition you know some uh, uh, people say that it wasn't like that it was not a reaction but it was a response meaning he was, he knew what he was doing he did not just you know uh, like lose the lid it wasn't like that but when he saw it there was a deep sense of anger and he wanted to respond to the to the dishonor that was taking place in the temple dishonor to whom dishonor to god because temple is a place for worship temple is not a place for business so he went and he made the whip of cords and then with that whip of cords we read that he uh, drove these these uh, um you know these people out of the temple with their sheep and oxen and for <coughs> the changers money and it, it says overturn the table so he really used his anger to show the people that you cannot do this in god's house so what does this teach us it teaches us that the temple you know when you when we study about god's house being the temple it's a place where god is worshiped god is exalted god fills the temple and we are there to honor him we are there to exalt him we are there to walk in surrender before the lord in worship that's how we come there you know with thanksgiving and praise enter his gates with the thanksgiving his courts with praise so that's the attitude of our hearts that is required to enter the temple but here jesus understood you know, what kind of an attitude these people carry and their attitude was not that of worship so what does he do you know he just chases them out he displaces anger and this is what jesus says he says um don't make my father's house a house of merchandise zeal for your house has eaten me up okay so two things one is the temple is the father's house it's a house remember uh, that implies so many other things god stays there <clears throat> we go there because you know we are the family of god you know we choose to honor god because he in the house he's the householder he's the head of the house right jesus is the uh, cornerstone uh, all these things uh, we can understand when you say that the temple is the house of god father sounds the second thing is <clears throat> jesus had passion for the house of god zeal is what zeal is passion passion you know um, desire he was completely his heart was for the father's house for the house of god for the temple you know for the today uh, we we know that the church is the representative right on the earth of the kingdom of god so we too must be zealous for the 
when i say church you know i'm not just referring to the local church but we know the spiritual dimension of the church you know the kingdom of god the global body of christ we must be zealous and if there is anything that takes place you know which will bring down the honor of god like jesus we can uh, i mean we should we should get that godly anger and see how how can we address this matter uh, you know of course from an or uh, in an honorable way but you notice that jesus was very zealous and how zealous was he he saying that zeal for your house has eaten me up or i'm consumed i'm so passionate about the house of god okay uh, and this statement it's actually from the old testament from psalm 69 and verse 9 Uh, and he kind of repeats it over here but we understand the attitude right that jesus had for the house of god so uh today we are all you know we bible college we want to do ministry we want to serve god when we serve god let us do it passionately let it not be ah okay ministry jesus his attitude was not like that it says zeal for your house has eaten me up meaning uh totally into it okay uh, so that is uh, the the right way of serving god and having a heart for the church or having a heart for the kingdom of god no nothing less than that even when uh, jesus talks about the first commandment he says love the lord your god with all your heart with all your uh, you know mind with all your strength so everything that we have is supposed to be given to god so that's the manner in which we have to love god we also have to love his house okay then moving forward so that is the other incident that we see and we learn from that incident now the next uh thing that happens is the jews come <clears throat> to jesus and <clears throat> they ask him the question what sign do you show to us since you do these things okay what signs do you show to us since you do these things so the the question is that jesus is moving with authority in the temple okay he got angry he drove out the money changers so the jews are wondering who is this person uh, who who is kind of uh, you know like he is taking authority in the temple and he is deciding what should happen and what should not happen in the temple so seems like a man of authority or influence and that is why they go to him uh and they ask what sign do you show to us to prove your authority to explain your authority and the jews were people who always wanted a sign you know we we read that right in the in the word of god the greeks wanted um, what wisdom is it the greeks want wisdom but the jews are looking for signs so they were a people who asked god for uh, supernatural things to take place or some kind of a sign to take place so jesus tells them about something that is going to happen he says destroy this temple and in 3 days i will raise it up and the jews they are amazed they like what is this man talking it has taken 46 years to build this temple okay to uh, <coughs> um, erect it and then you know just um, uh, incrementally keep adding to the uh, construction of the temple and it is a glorious temple so when jesus said destroy it something that has taken 46 years to build you know if if you have destroyed in only 3 days <clears throat> i'm going to raise it back up they did not understand you know how the bible says uh, in the, in the book of corinthians <clears throat> excuse me everyone i think i need water i just quickly drink some water sorry Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so uh, he says, um, 
Mm. Yeah, the the in Cor in the book of Corinthians, you know, we we study how uh, only the spiritual the spiritual things can be understood by the uh, you know somebody who's alive in the spirit. So the natural mind cannot receive the things of the spirit. So here when Jesus says, you destroy the temple, the people were thinking in their natural mind. They did not understand. They thought, it's not practical. Okay, what this man is talking. But spiritually, you know, spiritual things are discerned spiritually. What is the spiritual truth that Jesus is trying to put forth to the people? He's talking about his own body. Okay, so the people were not able to understand that he said the temple destroy this temple. You know, later again, you you know, uh, Paul when Paul understood it, right? Only by the Holy Spirit we can get revelation. We can't get it, you know, just by doing only mind level research. We can't get it. Holy Spirit will teach us deeper truth revelation, but of course it will be confined to the uh, uh, written word of God. Okay, like it will not, or in other words, when I say confined, I just mean that it will not contradict the written word of God. So by the spirit, we can understand. So Paul later on also said this, right? That the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So destroy this temple is destroy his body because Jesus already knew the purpose for which God had sent him, which was to die for the redemption of mankind. So basically he was talking about his resurrection, um, that on the third day, he would rise again. Uh, and at that point, the disciples also did not understand uh, is what we, we can uh, uh, observe from, from this passage because John writes, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. So only when Jesus had died and risen did the disciples also understand what Jesus was saying. So here you have Jesus talking uh, uh, in a spiritual way, okay? And the natural mind could not understand it. So you, you see Jesus is functioning from uh, a spiritual place where zeal for your house has, has consumed me. And then the next thing is you destroy this temple, I will raise it up in three days. So he's coming from, uh, you know, the, the kingdom truth, the kingdom uh, reality, revelation uh, place. And, uh, you know, we, we will get used to this. This is how Jesus is talking. Okay, let's move on now. Okay, I will quickly come to the comments here. And I can see a comment which uh, Prince has shared. Uh, he says, the, uh, nowadays, uh, it's also happening that the church is becoming a marketplace. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know where you're coming from, Prince. I know that uh, sometimes, unfortunately, when we don't understand what the house of God is supposed to be, uh, we can get into this okay but it's very uh, sad and we have seen that it makes god angry jesus got angry right when people came to the temple or the place of worship but for their own benefit business give and take okay so yeah it's, it's sad but that should not happen <clears throat> Yeah. Any other thoughts or comments on this before I proceed? Yeah. Yes. Yes, Prince. Yeah. Yes, Kiran. Yeah, ma'am. Some, some, sometimes a uh, spiritual eyes is saying something different, but the natural mind is not recognized. You know? Yeah. 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 Master. Yeah, true, true, Kiran. Yeah, <clears throat> so we have to go by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and also, 
as you said you know uh, receive things from the spiritual mind yeah so for a believer also th there are uh, i'll quickly touch on that okay in in the conquest of the mind we have studied about the carnal mind so one can be a believer and be because every believer has a spiritual mind but when we don't use that spiritual mind when we are not walking in righteousness we are not renewing our minds what happens you know a uh, fleshly motivation is is part of our thinking and that is called as a carnal mind so that's also very unfortunate a believer who supposed to have a pure spiritual mind is actually walking with a carnal mind even that carnal mind cannot receive the things of god okay so that's a little bit for us about uh the right kind of response to the house of god now moving on uh we find that um when jesus was in jerusalem uh, and you know he was functioning with authority uh, he was standing up for the right things many believed in his name okay uh, and also it says when they saw the signs so far we have only observed the uh, water into wine miracle no uh, but seems like there were additional things that took place but what did the miracles do again people believe so that's why we are saying today we must also desire more of uh, god's supernatural power and when we uh, grow right in our in our uh, demonstration of the kingdom of god and all what happens now a lot of favor comes on our lives people start appreciating us then what should be our response you see jesus he was so uh, in tune with the heart of the father that he did not let these things affect him too much so it says so jesus did not commit himself to them when people are praising us we want to completely lean on that because it feels good you no know? people say oh so nicely you are preaching you are so anointed your ministry is so great so many miracles are taking place you know god is blessing you it sounds so nice sometimes we just want to depend on it we just want to lean on it because it feels good but jesus was not like that when people started believing him yet he did not commit himself to them okay because he knew all men at the end of the day he realized that you know what what god says about me is more important not just what man says and it says that you know uh, uh, he knew all men okay? he knew the condition of their hearts so same thing uh, <clears throat> you know it is said that if you um what okay anyway there's a <laughs> there's a saying but uh, i don't know exactly uh, you know the right statement i forget but it's something like if you live by oh yeah if you live by the praises of men uh, you will die by their insults or something like that because uh, the words of people are raising up our spirit we have given the words of people that much authority so if that is the case tomorrow if people to come and tell you oh what brother you didn't today's message was not at all anointed you know if we are depending on people's words that day heart will be broken we will be like oh no what will i do now people don't like me anymore or for some reason you know, there are lesser people in the church this week and you look at the numbers and you think what happened why people are not coming what will happen heart will be broken because you are depending on the people and the words of the people the appreciation of the people now if they stop it or they give negative comments that will break us but we should not depend feedback is good because if people if we don't receive a feedback then we can't improve so feedback is good you take it but uh, point is we should not depend so much that you know it affects us deeply that's the point so jesus was like that he was like ah okay okay yeah this pillar appreciating good well and good that's it nothing more to that so 
uh, not depending too much on the uh, thoughts of men. Okay, and we'll go on to the next chapter here. This is chapter three, and here we observe a, a Pharisee. A Pharisee is a religious person. Okay, so a religious person. His name is Nicodemus. and it says he is a ruler of the jews so he is not an ordinary man he is an influencer he comes to jesus by night okay so why did he come by night see already you can notice that jesus is gaining popularity and people are putting their trust in jesus so nicodemus would have heard ha huh, there's a man he's doing miracles he has great authority uh you know all that he has he has heard all this and he has developed respect for this jesus but at the same time knowing the jews he knew that there are people who don't support jesus also so for him it's like he wants to come close to jesus but at the same time he wants to preserve his reputation so in the night he goes to jesus he doesn't want anybody to know that he went so quietly that's the implication he goes to jesus and he said uh rabbi uh, we know that you are a teacher come from god for no one can do these things no one can do these signs that you do unless god is with him so he is affirming and he say i'm clear that you are not ordinary definitely god is the one who has sent you and god is the one who is anointing you then jesus said to him most assuredly i say to you unless one is born again he cannot see the kingdom of god so nice conversation okay very interesting nicodemus is saying something else jesus is saying something else okay you're like what is this what was jesus thinking you see nicodemus came maybe he wanted to clarify his theological questions because he is a pharisee himself and he is influential he is a ruler so he would have had some doubts okay but jesus goes to the core of his doubt and he re realizes you know what nicodemus whatever question you ask me the answer that you need is that i am the messiah Okay, so Jesus goes straight to that point before addressing, you know, different other things that Nicodemus may have brought up. Jesus said, "Hello, Nicodemus. I know your need. You need to know the Savior. Okay, come on. Let me tell you the final answer. Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Period. Okay. So it also shows us, you see." when people ask questions jesus is moving with that spirit of discernment he is understanding the need of the person not just the question much deeper than the question what is there in his heart why he is asking this question ha ah, okay he he and and i mean he didn't even ask a question actually he just said oh jesus you know we know you are great all that but the discerning spirit right by the holy spirit he knows okay this man needs a savior let me go straight to the point and he says you know you unless you're born again you could miss you cannot see the kingdom of god so born again that means to be born from above okay so jesus was referring to the new birth that somebody who believes in god can receive and he introduces nicodemus to this now nicodemus he already said he uh, he must have been an intellectual otherwise why would he come to jesus uh, unless he had something to clarify so the moment jesus says you must be born again he has questions what is this born again what is this kingdom of god i want to know so he asks his doubt he says Okay, you're saying born again. Everybody is born only once. How can a man be born when he's old? Legitimate question, right? Very practical. 
because he is applying it to himself. Okay, now I'm already grown, and Jesus is saying, if I need to enter the kingdom of God, I need to be born again. How to do this? Like, can can somebody enter his mother's womb and be born again for the second time? So. you know sometimes our thinking is very limited again if we go back to what we said in the earlier uh, chapter it's a spiritual uh, uh, you know mind which can receive spiritual things how is nicodemus trying to process natural mind natural mind is limited i will destroy this temple how can you destroy the temple you should be born again how can a man who is old be born again so you see spiritual truth has to be received with the spiritual mind only then we will understand so anyway thank god jesus did not say okay you are so dumb nothing like that but jesus says okay come on let me explain to you i say to you unless one is born again of water and spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of god that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit do not marvel that i said this to you you must be born again the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes so is everyone who is born of the spirit so when jesus explains himself further okay and uh, tries to tell him what he really means he says look born again does not mean physical birth okay but born of the water and the spirit so he brings in the holy spirit here and reveals him uh, as the one who will do this work in us okay and he says water now some people uh, the interpretation of that water is uh, people have said it is baptism unless somebody is baptized in water uh, and accepts christ you cannot enter the kingdom of god but then you know when you look at the work of the holy spirit in um like acts chapter 10 we will see that as soon as as soon as the the family of cornelius hears the good news they accept christ okay and the immediate thing that happens is they are baptized in the holy spirit so what does that tell us obviously they are born again without being born again how can you receive the holy spirit the holy spirit is only for those who are born again isn't it so somebody who is born again they were not baptized in water yet so what is the show like even if someone's not baptized in water what a baptism does not it's not a requirement for the new life in christ yes once somebody has received christ so we see jesus jesus was uh, baptized in water then the apostles they were uh, you know baptizing people in water when they believed okay now you have believed now you come and be baptized so believing is what makes you born again not the baptism in water so does the water here mean water baptism answer is no it does not mean water baptism now there are you know other interpretations to that water is also a symbol of the word of god so you know it is said you must be born of the word and you must be born of the spirit water is also a symbol of the spirit again right so uh, you know that's again a thought they saying okay it could mean uh, the the flow of the spirit and all uh, and there are others who say that water means uh, natural birth because uh, generally when natural birth happens the the child in the womb is covered in uh, water right the birth waters so that breaks and then the child is born so uh, one interpretation is that this is one must first of all be born naturally and then uh, a second birth or born again uh, is referring to the spiritual birth so without the spiritual birth one cannot enter the kingdom of god okay uh, now so he is making it clear what what uh, born again really means it's a spiritual thing it's a spiritual thing so how does this spiritual birth happen it happens by the spirit 
So Jesus is clarifying him. He say, "Don't look at it like a natural birth. Flesh from flesh you get only flesh, but from the spirit you get spirit. So born again it has to do with being born of the spirit." Okay. Uh, and then he again addresses the work of the spirit. You know, the the spirit is referred to uh, ruah or breath, right? Uh, in uh, I think it's the Hebrew Hebrew language rua. So uh, he he says like the wind blows or the spirit. Right? It's like uh, breath of wind. The spirit works, and we can't see the work of the spirit just like the wind, but we can see the effects of the wind. And in the same way, when the spirit is working, making someone born again. we will be able to see that in their life and we may not be able to see the uh, activity you know or or you know how how are they getting born again by the spirit we can't understand all the spiritual things but from the life we will be able to understand so that that is the thing so being born again is a work of the spirit being born again is being born from above being born again is a work of the spirit and only by the holy spirit one can be born again so that's what jesus is sharing and is inviting uh, nicodemus to accept this truth so we will see nicodemus response soon uh, let's go for a break i think the time is up now we will take a break and we will come back soon okay yeah thank you class